To capture the growing market for sporty family cars, Roots launched the Sunbeam Rapier in 1955. Eight years later, Harold Morris parted with £800 for his. I felt it was very much ahead of its time in looks. It didn't look like many cars did, a box with wheels on four corners. The rapiers show off their handling on the fast and frightening left hand. It was a sports version of the Hillman Minx. Ten years after the Jared Javelin had won its class at the Monte Carlo Rally, the rapier won the team prize at the same event. Harold, a headmaster, bought his because he had his own European rally in mind for the school holidays. I was wanting to do some touring on the continent and I thought that uh, if the rapier would uh, perform well on the Monte Carlo Rally, it would do for me. It's uh, quite a normal four-cylinder engine, 1592 cc. It's got twin Stromberg uh, carbs, which give it quite uh, good acceleration and speed. That's <laughs> supposedly the heating system, but it never was very efficient. It was quite a cold car in the winter. I like these... Um, two side grills. They were of course ventilators and it's possible to shut them from the inside if necessary. Another feature I liked about it was the fact that both windows wind down and give it a, well I, I think, a very sporting look. And it's ideal, that is, for touring in, uh, in warm weather. Another attractive feature, I think, is the walnut dashboard. This is a speedometer, of course, with the um, mileage on it, except that you have to add 100,000 onto that. <laughs> this is the, um, the demister, which again, um, well, we won't say anything about that. <laughs> Harold, his wife Biddy and daughter Jo, drove to Yugoslavia in the rapier, four years running. Just getting to Dover took most of the first day. We left home at 3am. It was a fine morning. We joined the M1 at Daventry. And we kept up a steady 65 to 70 miles an hour. And we were at Marble Arts just after 7am. I know Betty was not too keen on setting off in the middle of the I night. I say I'd like to, I've enjoyed leaving home, you see, and in the, in the early hours of the morning it was always worse, but it was always one of these sort of times that Harold chose that we must go, you see, so of course we all did as we were told. <laughs> Traffic was heavy, and it really is worthwhile leaving home a couple of hours earlier. I knew where I wanted to get to that day, and that was it. He was anxious, really, to get there. But I didn't want to spend more than three days getting there, you see. And we went to Sarajevo in Herd, and we were surrounded by crowds of children as soon as we got there, looking at the car and looking at us and looking at our daughter and saying, what an excellent car you have. What an excellent daughter, daughter you have. <laughs> yeah. I think it was the one phrase they'd learned. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite an adventure, really. Although the Minx line was popular, Roots only had 10% of the market. They wanted more, and so built a bigger family car, the Super Minx. For Dave Stanton, it was the start of an ongoing love affair. I was sitting in the office one day and my boss turned to me and said, a young lad like you ought to be driving a convertible. It started me looking. And I eventually saw this uh, Super Minx convertible in the garage in Wolverhampton and uh, I liked it straight away. We used to go abroad in it. We went to uh, Spain three times, touring with the hood down. We had some good times in it, yeah. yes. It was brilliant, really. We courted for 
three years, didn't we? We did, yes. yes. Three, yeah. three and a half years. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think the first two or three uh, continental holidays were during our courting years. We used to borrow a tent off the same boss that uh, advised me to buy a convertible in the first place and uh, we used to be able to get it up in, uh, in an hour and a meal on all within an hour. <laughs> I was a hairdresser at the time, so that was when all the bouffant hairdos were around and the flick-ups and... You used to wear all your headscarves as well, didn't you? Yes, yes, we used to have a, a pile of headscarves matching what I was wearing. This is one of them and uh, just I've got to imagine the pink hills and the flick ups <laughs> all around the edge, but uh, that's it, and then we were away then. <laughs> With so many memories linked to the car, Dave couldn't bring himself to sell it. This is the original Hillman Superwings convertible. I drove it for about 10 years and then put it in store here, and it's been here now for 23 years. And although it's out of the weather and under cover, it's uh, suffered quite badly from mildew inside. A mouse built his nest in the boot there, but it's only to be expected when it's been stored for so long. It wouldn't take too much work to put it back on the road again. And if he needs spares for the restoration, he's got a barn full. I've got about 20 Superminx doors, and there's about 15 or 18 Superminx windscreens here. I've never had a windscreen break on me in 35 years, but I always keep them just in case. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to have a bit of a clear out in here, I think. I've just put a new battery on the car and I'm going to try and start it up, but... Uh... No, I don't think we're going to get any luck. I'll give it another try. After 23 years, it's a bit too much to expect, even a Hillman to start. Oh, well, there's probably the right spare somewhere in the loft. 